Welcome to Parkour Science, Episode 4, Physics of the Standing Precision Jump, Part 2, Height Changes and Landings. If you haven't watched Part 1, I recommend you watch that first. Links in the description. We begin by making an interesting correction I found shortly after uploading Part 1. The landing angle of a level precision is not, in fact, ideally 45 degrees. As a matter of fact, an efficient jump will not allow for a 45 degree landing. The easiest way to explain this is to show that the trajectory is parabolic and thus symmetrical. The 45 degree angle occurs at an equal distance from the takeoff as the landing. The nature of the takeoff and landing result in the body being bent at landing, and thus the landing takes place later in the trajectory, resulting in a higher angle of incidence. Analysis of the parabolic trajectory shows that the parabola traced by the hips approximately intersects the landing point. This is useful to know because it gives insight into better balanced precisions. My research showed that a parabolic trajectory that intersected just 6 inches past the aim landing point resulted in loss of balance forward, and the same was true for falling backwards. With about 6 inches of play on each side, this gives credence to this landing being called a precision landing. Continuing with the consideration of the parabolic trajectory, we will look at an example of an equation of trajectory from takeoff to landing. If we plot for height versus time, we get a parabolic equation representing this motion. The second equation represents the forward motion. The numbers here display some important theories of kinematics. This number here shows that the tracer is under the influence of gravity. Here we have the initial upward velocity, and here the forward velocity. Lastly, this number is based on the height of the center of mass at takeoff and is thus based on the height of the tressor. In combination with horizontal and vertical motion, we can also consider rotational motion, and this appears primarily in the action of the tuck. From the physics perspective, the tuck provides for a slightly faster rotation while in the air. This increase in rotational speed is an important concept to understand for many techniques. In the interest of time, we will further study the physics behind the effects of tuck on rotation in a later video when its relevance will be more apparent. At this point, we need to clarify the important difference between ballistic and human flight. As I mentioned in part 1, the 45 degree angle is not always the best takeoff in parkour. Though the displacement on a level precision is ideally at 45 degree angle, humans tend not to reach maximum jumping distance at such an angle. This is due to the lower center of mass when landing at level, as well as human muscle structure. So even though you will feel like you are taking off at 45 degrees, and your body angle will be ideally 45 degrees, your velocity will tend to be closer to 30 degrees, and even lower for a running jump, around 17 to 27 degrees. Because at a run, you already have more speed forward than your legs can produce upward, thus a lower angle results. This lower angle is also why running precisions are often much more comfortable when landing on an edge rather than a flat surface. The low angle means that the friction needs to be supplemented by a horizontal normal force in order to come to a stop. We will now consider some slightly more complex precision jumps, namely upward and downward trending jump. For the upward precision, there are a few points to consider. The trajectory still follows the same rules and is thus marked by a parabola from takeoff to landing. For this reason, it is helpful to realize that for an upward precision, it is important to jump up and come down onto the object as much as possible. A straight trajectory will most likely result in falling backward or clipping the feet or knees. So for beginners especially, make sure you are aiming to jump above the landing surface when doing high precisions, not directly at the landing surface. For the downward precision, things become a bit more complex and a bit more interesting. You might expect that maximum distance will be achieved with a 45 degree angle jump, but the lower the landing point, the less likely a tressor is to actually jump at 45 degrees. This at first glance would appear to be an inefficient solution to the jump. But when you consider that safety is an important part of efficiency, it makes a lot of sense. This is both because the optimal angle on a downward precision is lower, and though distance increases with a significant drop and an optimal angle for distance, so does the danger in the form of a greater drop. To add control and safety to a low precision, experienced tracers take off at a suitably low angle to achieve the distance and maintain safety. Thus, energy is sacrificed at the beginning of the jump to conserve it in the landing. Tracers often have a general understanding of the basic idea that more jump power is needed to achieve an upward position, and less power is needed to make an equal distance downward. Hopefully, I can give a much more precise understanding to all tracers, allowing you to quickly figure out your capability to make any specific jump. 
It's common to hear a phrase like, well, it's a foot further than you can usually precision, but it's six inches down, so you can probably make it. The problem with these statements, though they show a rudimentary understanding of trajectories, is that such a calculation is not nearly that simple. The equation needed to make such a calculation looks like this. Complex enough that I hesitate to do it in my head when figuring if I can make a jump. I have used this equation and observation of skilled dressors and calculated, graphed, and extrapolated to, to give a rule of thumb which may not be exactly accurate, but will be easily calculated in your head with reasonably small error. This data shows that for every two feet of drop, the average dressor will gain one foot of distance in their precision. An upward precision, however, has a greater effect, losing around one foot of distance for every one foot of height, and at extremes even more. Keep in mind this is not the end-all be-all of whether or not you can complete a jump. There are, of course, important factors such as your physiology, your confidence, surface you are landing on, the technique level, and safety. This equation just tells you if it's possible for your body to complete it if you make no mistakes. In the end, it's your job to train safe. The moment before landing, you want your feet out in front of you where you can see them coming down on the landing surface. This makes a proper landing angle possible for a static precision. If you can't see your feet when landing, you're pretty much guaranteed to lose your balance forward. Remember to pull your knees up to partially tuck. This is important for safety, and the rotation is invaluable in a good, comfortable, balanced landing. Quick tip to improve your landing and have better balance. Aim your hips at the point you want to land. Your center of mass is very near your hips in most cases, and because of the parabolic intersection of the hips with the landing point, if you focus on aiming your hips to intersect the landing point, it will make it much easier to achieve a static landing. Because of the 45 degree or greater landing friction angle mentioned in both the wall run and part one, if your feet slip when doing a level precision, you can be pretty sure your jump angle is too low. Try to jump up more. Thanks for watching. My next video will be on landing technique and impact reduction. Please ask questions if you have them, comment, rate, and subscribe for more parkour science videos.